Oh hi there, I'm Black Bright and welcome to my channel. Thank you for subscribing, thank you for sharing, thank you for liking. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the death of Stephen Diamond, on who was one of the uh, one of the people on the panel who died on after being baited severely baited by Jeremy Kyle. Now. I've always watched Jeremy Carl's show and well, not always watched it. The few I have watched, I, they've made me feel very uncomfortable. I used to think to myself, how can anyone sit there and take the way he speaks to them? Then I used to wonder, why does he speak to them that way? The way he used to sit on the stage and really chastise them and make people feel like crap. Now, I then started thinking about the type of people he had on the audience, in the audience, not in the audience, on the panel. And I used to think, you know, they're vulnerable people. They, the majority of them look like working class people who may have been on housing estates. I don't want to stereotype, but it, it looked like from the conversations that he had with them and how he interviewed them, that seemed to be a pattern. He didn't seem to have any intellectuals on there or anybody that, you know, was in the same level as him who he could challenge him. So they used to sit there and, you know, just take his insults. And it's, I'm not surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised that um, people haven't committed them suicide earlier. Apparently, I found out since Stephen Diamond, two other people had committed suicide, but it was silenced for some reason. We didn't hear about it, and now all of a sudden, it's come out. Apparently, um, there was a woman who committed suicide because the audience and Kyle um, more or less chanted for the man to leave his wife. Um, apparently he had failed the um, lie detector test and they reckoned he was a bad husband and all this kind of stuff. And anyway, she ended up, after 18 years, he left her and she committed suicide. So, you know, these people, I don't know if they have a duty of care. I don't know if they put these people under any kind of um, mental health check. I mean, do they check to see if they're stable-minded? Or do they just say, okay, listen, we're going to give you a hundred quid, come on our show. What kind of story do you have to tell us? And then they probably will say to them, look, you know, we are going to be a bit rough with you. I don't know if they warn them. But anybody who watches a Jeremy Kyle show should know how he treats them is totally out of order. I didn't even know he went to public school, but I'm going to show you what Terry Christian says. Um, I think he used to be in, it's either EastEnders or Coronation Street, I can't remember, but you'll recognise him. In class background, you know, I grew up on benefits. I actually worked with Jeremy, you know, for, for two years, you know, on radio, so he's a crossover, and I, I got on well, well with him, except for on the score of politics. And the reality is, you know, 14 years, they should have taken that show off 14 years ago. It's disgraceful, it's bear baiting, that's all it's ever been. It's, an att it's attacking poor people. I mean, what I said on social media was basically, would they employ me to get Boris Johnson on and shout at him and say, what about your mistresses? Who paid for them? Them. What about you being sacked for, for lying twice? No. But when it comes to poor people with problems, it's almost like you are the authors of your own misfortune. So I'm allowed to speak to you any way that I like. And it, and it didn't help the fact that Jeremy is a public schoolboy. So he's shouting at people whose lives he's got no interest, no kind of, if you like, uh, experience of. There's nothing visceral to him about it. And, and so the whole portrayal of it was bear bait. And it, it was ugly. I mean, I did watch a few of them, you know, because I, I could understand why it was popular. But I felt like I needed to take a shower. Now, that isn't Jeremy Kyle's fault. That's ITV's fault. You've got to look at who runs the media and allows these shows. Because all they're going to do with this, they love baiting poor people. Benefit Street, the bailiffs are coming, all those kind of shows. It's all about demonising poor people, demonising people who grew up in council estates. You know, I'm no bleeding heart liberal, but you don't have to be intelligent to see it. You know, what, what about, why don't we do tax dodger towers? 
you know, I find out. It's like, well, you could have bought three hospitals with the money you did paying taxes last year. You know, there's plenty of dysfunctional rich people in this country. In fact, all our problems are caused by them, i.e. Brexit, the tax dodgers, charter. So, so this for you, this for you Terry. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you because, um, yeah, when when we watch these programs, I don't think, I've never ever thought of it from a socio-economic level. I've ne Well, I guess I didn't know much about Jeremy Kyle. All I knew is that the way he spoke to people was totally disrespectful and it made me feel uncomfortable. So I couldn't watch it. And the occasions that I happened to turn it on, it hadn't changed. So, I mean, I'm glad they've taken it off. But the thing is, he's still going to get a t £3 million payout. He was on £2 million a year, I think, and they're paying him £3 million. Um, So, you know, he's got nothing to lose. But like um, Terry Christian says, it's the, um, the programmers who have allowed it to go on. And I'm surprised they've ha allowed it to go on since there's been deaths in the, in, in, the, in the past. I think when you're dealing with reality shows, when I think about uh, Muggy Mike, um, and he didn't have any support after Love Island, you know, they put ordinary people on these reality live shows and they get no kind of support. It doesn't appear. I mean, I think the winners of um, people, things like Love Island, they get some support, but they don't, and they're bombarded by the media, they're tracked down, you know, and it's very, very hard. I mean, when you first do it, you feel important. You know, it kind of gives you some validation. You think, oh, yeah, you know, I'm famous. All the, they're all the cameras, they're all taking photographs of me. I can imagine how exciting that must be in the initial stages, but it must wear on you when you realise every single move you make is being recorded, being publicised from what you wear, whether it looks good, whether you look good. Every single thing is left to the interpretation of the media and it can either lift you up or push you down. And so when you're thinking about shows like Jeremy Kyle, it's not nice. It's not nice to be in public. And I mean, people say, so why would you go on there? Why would you air your dirty laundry? Why would you tell people your story? You know, you're putting yourself in that position. But I tell you something, if you are hungry or if you don't have money to buy food and somebody like that show comes up and says, OK, your show sounds interesting. We're going to give you 100 quid. You're going to think 100 quid. I'm just going to go on there for 20 minutes or however long they hire you for. And yeah, you know, I, I couldn't make a hundred quid in that space of time. So why not? Let me go on there. You know, I can take it. And you don't realise how, you know, the constant criticism, the constant, you know, insults, the, the, the humiliation, I don't think they estimate how they're going to feel at the end of it. And he's got a way of really um, using all the evidence he has to make people feel like crap, whether they deserve it or not. Nobody deserves to be spoken to like that. So, yeah, I'm glad they've taken it off. I'm sorry that it took a couple of deaths for them to do so. But, hey, everything in its time. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.